is never, never give up. It's believe that you can win until a horn sound. It's up. It's in. could talk. Imagine the stories they would tell of the teams and the players, the moments and the memories that have made Williams Arena one of the cathedrals of college basketball. Her banners are worn like formal wear, special dress for special occasions. For a place up here is a place in history. Some ten stories below, a team of destiny gathered last fall. Its makeup was a melting pot. Native sons from the city, the suburbs, and from rural Minnesota. Adopted sons from North Carolina and New York, from Little Rock, Arkansas, Oakland, California, an Indian reservation in North Dakota, and the basketball meccas of Indiana and Kentucky. They signed up, they walked on, and together they experienced life in a foxhole. Those Bloomington nights. The Iowa afternoons. A chill in West Lafayette. And the ecstasy of Ann Arbor. Ultimately, they became one. Individuals defined by their unity, performing in concert on a national stage. Their championship season drove deep into March, from Kansas City to San Antonio, and finally to Indianapolis for the pinnacle of the NCAA playoffs. Along the way, those Raptors at Williams Arena shook in celebration, for this was the finest season in the 102-year history of Gopher basketball. Wow! Let's take a look at some of our bubble teams. Minnesota won seven of their last nine games, had ten wins in the Big Ten. Not enough, though. The motivation was written in those sad faces of a year ago. Under Clem Haskins, Minnesota has traditionally played hard and competed for postseason opportunities. But in 1996, a team on a roll was jilted by the NCAA and detoured to the NIT. And I took a little personal. I think Clem Haskins was motivated even harder to drive the kids in order to reach this goal because I was disappointed for them. I made a promise I couldn't live up to. The heartbreak served to harden their resolve. He goes in and scores and was fouled on the play. Jackson with a great effort. This time, the suspense of Selection Sunday wouldn't be if. Just tell us when and where. We'll be there with a Big Ten championship and an appetite for more. The top seed, Minnesota. Congratulations, the Golden Gophers. The number one seed was both a ringing endorsement and vindication for a team that began the season on the outskirts of the top 25. The months ahead would be a steady climb all the way to number two, with a few pollsters convinced that maroon and gold were the colors of number one.
Minnesota's march to its best record ever was a marathon, not a sprint. Survival of not just the fittest or the most talented, but of the toughest and the most determined. On their home court, they were unbeaten. Downtown, they were too. Far from home, in the sunshine of the San Juan shootout, came the first inkling that Minnesota would cast a long shadow, that the season just begun could truly be something special. Goes to the baseline, his pull-up jumper, he scored with four seconds left. That particular night, Creighton really had us beat. He played an outstanding basketball game. Uh, we did not panic, we didn't fold up, the tent had a chance to quit. The guys hung together, I think, one, by winning that close game, with Eric Harris at the baseline jump shot, really gave him confidence, gave the team confidence, and the things that we run in practice, we talk about, if you execute them, you get the shot, you got to knock it down. When you get it, knock it down. The lessons of San Juan served them well. Winning close games was a test the Gophers would pass repeatedly. 24 hours later, they aced an even tougher exam, this one against Clemson an ACC heavyweight which had already beaten Kentucky. Charles Thomas of three, he hits again. In a balancing act that would be their trademark, they were maroon and gold Wallendas. Six players scored between seven and 17 points as the title in Puerto Rico was won handily 75 to 65. The San Juan experience became the springboard for their best season ever. From Providence to Lincoln to their own backyard, Victories fed their confidence. Confidence led to victory. When December gave way to January, the Gophers were poised for prime time for a run at the Big Ten Championship. In the weeks that followed, defense, desire, and depth were attributes that turned the conference race into a winter-long game of follow the leader. You have a group of young men that work together. Players are unit, you can accomplish a great thing. That's why the Gophers are very good. They really work together, and they pull for one another. Clem Haskins' crew featured a leading candidate for Player of the Year and consistent winners of Player of the Week. But above all, their team concept produced players of the moment. It's a three! In a war of attrition, Minnesota would not be outnumbered. In the opening week, Bobby Jackson doubled down for 20 points and 10 rebounds against Wisconsin. And Courtney James' near double-double was key to a lopsided win at Michigan State. Three nights later came the miracle in Bloomington, where contributions, both large and small, added up to a victory of historic proportion. Quincy Lewis helped set the table with 20 points off the bench. Down the stretch, Brent Haskins gave his dad a timely assist when Brent noticed that Sam Jacobson's banishment with five personal fouls was, in fact, an error. Given a reprieve, Jacobson re-entered, and suddenly, Indiana's apparent victory was just a mirage. From seven down with 58 seconds to play, a trio of three-pointers and a crucial turnover turned a hopeless cause into a defining moment. Bobby Jackson forced the overtime. Minnesota ties it at 81! When the extra session began, Jacobson took over, scoring six consecutive points to start the overtime. Soon after, the celebration was on in the wake of a 96-91 win. Man, this is, you don't know how much, how, how good I feel right now. I've been wanting to beat IU since I was in the eighth grade. We played together so much and, and we're so close together that, you know, we, we got so much confidence in each, other, in each other that, you know, we don't think we're going to lose a game. Playing Indiana and Michigan in the same week is a doubleheader with a high degree of difficulty. But the following Saturday, the Gophers fought off an emotional hangover to beat the Wolverines 70 to 64. The unsung hero, Charles Thomas, whose box score looked like a misprint. 11 points in just eight minutes of play. Jackson, meanwhile, was routinely spectacular with 20 points and 11 rebounds. Combined with his 26 points in Bloomington, Bobby was the Big Ten's 
Player of the Week. I'm just feeling good. I can just feel the Big Ten Championship coming on. By the end of January, the Gophers were number eight with a bullet. At Williams Arena, local celebrities, a national television audience, and Andre Woolridge were all in the house for a first place showdown with Iowa. The showstopper was the kid from Cottage Grove. As a schoolboy legend, Sam Jacobson had nights like this before, but never at this level, and never with so much at stake. Sam takes a long one, he scores a three! Sam drained 12 of 16 shots for a career-high 29 points. At the other end of the floor, Woolridge wore Eric Harris like a tattoo. The Gophers' defensive specialist held the Hawkeyes' superstar to just three field goals. The dominant guard play by Harris and Jackson propelled the Gophers from a four-point lead at the half to a 66-51 win. Jackson to hit to Lewis and a slam! With sole possession of the Big Ten lead, the Gophers soon put the rest of the conference in their rearview mirror. A smothering defensive effort by John Thomas headlined an easy win over Purdue. Thomas scored 17 himself in a 19-point win at Northwestern. And the Minnesota bench added 29 in a home court win over Penn State. The backbreaker was a 25-4 run highlighted by Miles Tarver. From there, the ride to the finish was pitted with potholes and pressure. Five of their next six games would be decided by a total of just 10 points. Harris will bring it up court, tie game. Out to Jacobson, starts to move, puts it up and in. As a testament to their grace under fire, the Gophers won all five, starting with a statistical rarity, a victory in West Lafayette. Prior to the season, Clem Haskins said the stops in Indiana would decide the championship. With their win in Bloomington, the Gophers were halfway home. But extracting a W from Mackey Arena, where they hadn't won in 15 years, was a tall order. Once again, Minnesota's trademarks, defense and depth, made the difference. Charles Thomas took just two shots all night, both from behind the arc, and both went in. Quincy Lewis added 10 more off the bench to join Jackson, Jacobson, and John Thomas in double figures. Big John's night featured a 40-foot dash to pay dirt. That might be the slowest fast break in the history of college <laughs> basketball. With the outcome in the balance, Thomas was the center of attention as the Gophers clung to their lead like lint on a blue suit. The game ended in desperation for the Boilermakers in victory for Minnesota. I want to dedicate this win to Coach Ashton because he hasn't won ever since he's been coaching. So uh, I think it's a 11 years. It's a longer time than the four years that I've been here. So I'll take this win. I'll be happy with it. But I know that I have to go to Iowa. Uh, we have to go to Iowa and win. Uh, but uh, like I said, hats off to Coach Ashton. Three days later, the stop was Iowa City, where a letdown would have been understandable. Instead, the Gophers were a pillar of strength. From the opening tap, Minnesota hit everything in sight. Long range, mid range, point blank. On the run, it didn't matter. If it went up, it went in. The always excitable Iowa fans could barely contain themselves. As the Gophers' lead swelled to 13 points in the first half, 18 with just 12 and a half minutes to play. Still, the outcome wasn't decided until the final seconds as Andre Woolridge single-handedly brought the Hawkeyes back. Andre was spectacular, but he made one mistake. With 13 seconds left and the score tied at 66, he sent Eric Harris to the free throw line. Woolridge had one last chance for Iowa, but this time his shot spun out and into the strong hands of John Thomas, who latched on to the Gophers' 11th Big Ten win. On February 22nd, with nearly a third of the schedule left to play, this magical season took on a magic number. One, to clinch a tie for the Big Ten title. Two, to win it outright. 
the victories would come, they would not come easily. Against Illinois, the fight was uphill from the start. But in character, the climb was a team effort. Ten players played, nine players scored. There's Carver with the ball, puts it up and in. Carver ties it. Down two in the second half, the catalyst, Bobby Jackson, furthered his campaign for Big Ten Player of the Year. He goes in and scores! Jackson's remarkable three-point play gave the Gophers their first lead of the game. But once again, the issue would be in doubt until the buzzer. It's up. It's in! John Thomas gets the Gophers the lead. Here comes Illinois. Garris into the front court. The ball is stripped away. The Gophers have it, and they have won the basketball and clinch the Big Ten title tie. As John Thomas walked to the free throw line against Illinois, there was no panic in John's face. There was great confidence he was going to make the free throws. And I tried to uh, instill that in my players. And I think that's why we're winning, because they don't show weakness, and they don't show panic, and they just go out and just execute. And I said from time to time, we're going to miss a shot, OK? Somebody's going to beat us, but they have to beat us. We're not going to beat ourselves. A share of the Big Ten title was cause to celebrate. Minnesota had won the league just twice in 60 years. Improbable odds for a head coach who predicted a championship in October. And Clem Haskins relishing the moment and half court waving to the fans. We had nine, ten guys could play. They've been playing together now for almost two years to three years. And it makes a difference. You have experienced players, and they were very experienced and veteran guys. And, and the chemistry was good. They liked each other off the court, on the court. All of those little things are very, very important, I think, in outcome of the games, winning and losing games. So that's why I realized it got a special group. Special athletes and special people. Young men such as senior co-captain John Thomas. Outstanding individual, class with a captain C. Coach has expectations of me as far as, you know, running plays and, and, and being the emotional leader on this team uh, on the court as, as well, you know, and as far as off the court is concerned, make sure, you know, the young guys don't get out of line and things like that. Um, uh, I keep a watchful eye, you know, sometimes they don't know I'm there, but, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I... When a basketball team becomes family, as the Gophers surely did, the captains are big brothers. In Thomas and Trevor Winter, Minnesota had steady hands on the throttle. I'd, I'd like people to, to think back of me and, and uh, think of myself and John as being the co-captains of the team you know, that, that won the Big Ten championship, you know, the first Big Ten championship in 15 years. you got to have guys like that who accept their role and, uh, and to help the team. That's why we have a special ball club. This is why we're winning. It's because of a guy like Trevor winning this ball club. Senior Bobby Jackson's time at Minnesota was far too short, but it was time well spent. In just two seasons, the junior college transfer gave us a lifetime of memories with a style of play that suggested anything was possible. That's big time. You have to be born with, I think, a certain amount of ability. It becomes just God-given talent, athletic ability. That's not coaching. God bless you with that. He's blessed with great quickness and great strength and a great will to win, desire to win. I'm known for going out there and busting my butt every time I step on that court. And you know, and that's what it's all about, just going out there and landing on the line every day in and day out. Hard work and teamwork were an unbeatable tandem that became the Gophers' anthem. Eric Harris was the embodiment of both. Eric's sacrifice was a summer of sweat that molded the junior from New York into a point guard with promise. We needed him to play that position and play it extremely well for us to have a chance to win. And he's returned with a different attitude of his work ethics, his attitude towards uh, uh, winning, his attitude towards getting himself better and getting the team better. I know I have to step up and play, you know, big guys like myself, Sam, you know, John and Trevor. We're all pretty much veterans on this team. And in order for us to have a lot of success, we got to, you know, step up and do most of the, you know, hard work. It was a labor of love, shouldered by an entire roster. Oh, my! Not stars and understudies, but equals, who discovered one of sports' most elusive intangibles, 
The cliche is chemistry. It's greater team unity. I think everybody just chills better off and on the court. And everybody just gets along. And I think um, that's hard to find in college basketball. It's T-E-A-M underlined and everything else because it's a very, very close team. And it's fun to watch these kids play together. Their unselfishness was born of acceptance. Roles had to be filled to make this puzzle a work of art. And players accustomed to the starting lineup set aside personal goals for the good of the team. My role on this team is to come off and uh, give a spark to the team, either defensively with some uh, steals or offensively. You know, if we're in uh, the offense is kind of sputtering to come in, you know, give some quick points. But I come off the bench, you know, get some points with coach, uh, get loose balls, take charges, do the little things to help the team win. Charles Thomas and Quincy Lewis wore the tag instant offense. Miles Tarver brought rebounding and defense. Those are two things I bring every night. Uh, regardless of who we're playing against, what type of team they are, I feel I can compete with anybody. Minnesota's bench played with an attitude, from the trio of sophomores to freshman Russ Archambo. And the tip is good! Together, a Gopher team that began the season as an unknown commodity dominated the Big Ten with its defense, its depth, its unselfish play, and a toughness defined by Courtney James. Yeah! We gotta keep our image. We wanna be one of the toughest teams in the Big Ten for us up front and in the backcourt. With me and John and Sam up there, I mean, we just try to take over, rule the boards, or anybody come through the lane, give them a little elbow, a little chuck, you know, let them know that we're there. On February 22nd, they were at the top, just where their coach said they would be. In this season of gold, the prophecies came true. I think once we get to NCAA, I think we'll be a team to watch. If you were to script a fantasy starring the Golden Gophers, a championship season would include wins in Bloomington, West Lafayette, Iowa City, and most certainly Ann Arbor, where Chrysler Arena stands as the Bastille. You get in, but you rarely get out alive. For a storybook finish, put the Big Ten title on the line, and for added motivation, throw in a quote, the kind that winds up on a locker room bulletin board. Some six weeks earlier, after losing at Williams Arena, Maurice Taylor flat out predicted that Minnesota would not win in Michigan. A word of caution, don't take Maurice to Las Vegas. Puts up a three, it's good, and he'll go to the line with a chance for a four-point play. With a tie for the title already clinched, the Gophers could afford a mulligan. A loss at Michigan would be little more than a speed bump. Instead, they went after the championship with a vengeance. Down eight in the second half, Minnesota's defensive pressure held Michigan scoreless for six minutes, long enough for Quincy Lewis to give the Gophers a one-point lead. The Wolverines moved back in front, but not for long, as the final minutes belonged to a Minnesota backcourt that was brilliant. Harris cut it to two. And then Bobby Jackson, with the shot clock down to three, made the shot of the season. Jackson bumps with fast and puts up the shot to tie it up at 54. As you watch it again, cast your ballot for the Big Ten's Player of the Year. The Gopher guards still had one more chapter to write. Bullock loses the ball to Eric Harris, slapped to Bobby Jackson, stolen away by Hughes, but he commits a foul with 2.9 seconds left. And Bobby Jackson may have a chance to win the Big Ten championship from the free throw line. And for the first time in 15 years, the Big Ten basketball championship will come to Minnesota. In the euphoria that followed, the Gophers received commemorative hats and t-shirts, and finally, a website on the basketball internet. Call it www.big10championship.com.
Minnesota. Big Ten champions, 1997. Senior year, you know it's got to be sweet. Hopefully there's more to come, and, and I'm sure there is, but this is the best. I, I can't explain it. From Ann Arbor, with a nylon necktie, the Gophers came home for the hardware. The appetizer was a 75-72 win over Indiana. Down one in the first half, Courtney James torched his home state university with eight unanswered points. Once again, Minnesota's bench proved decisive. Quincy Lewis and Charles Thomas combined for 25 points. Thomas matched his career high with 13. Trevor Winter weighed in with his finest game of the season, an effort that featured a career best 10 rebounds. For the Williams Arena sellout, the victory was a joy to watch. The aftermath was even better. group of young men that worked very hard to make this possible. I want to give my team a big hand and thank them so much for working so hard. Thanks, God. Amid the music and the fireworks and the maroon and gold confetti, the players bonded with their faithful, collectively the best sixth man in college basketball. Together, their celebration was an old-fashioned barn dance that would be replayed like the Star Wars trilogy. Five days later, the emotional dam burst again. Bobby Jackson! In tears for the four seniors who were playing their final game at Williams Arena. Aaron Stauber! With pride when a permanent reminder of their success was unfurled for all to see. Then, with exuberance, as a pair of underclassmen spearheaded a win over Michigan State. Jacobson, a long three. That's the fan from way out. James and Jacobson had 33 points between them in a victory that made Minnesota perfect at home for the first time since 1949. When the game ended, the party resumed. And those rafters overhead must have been smiling. Another banner was in place. A lasting memory of a special achievement by a special group of young men. I wish I could hold on to this forever. I wish I could bottle it up and keep it for someday. Their place in history was secure. And the best was yet to come. It has been a marvelous year for the Minnesota Golden Gophers, 27-3. They've been ranked as high as two in the country, dominated the Big Ten, and now they're looking for some respect on the national stage. The draw for the Midwest Regional included a basketball menagerie, Bobcats and Owl, Tigers and Bruins, Predators known for their ferocity, who were eaten alive by the toughest gopher on the planet. Swish again, he's two for two. In a first round game at Kansas City, 
Minnesota wore its top seed like a suit of armor. For the national audience, upsets and upstarts are part of the tournament's charm. But from the opening tap, the Gophers authored a grim fairy tale. If you were looking for Cinderella, look elsewhere. Into the lane, goes all the way in and scoops it up and in. Harris, 10 to nothing. As a 16 seed, Southwest Texas State was hoping to stay close. Instead, its glass slipper was dusted early by a 13 to nothing run. At the half, Minnesota's lead was 29. It ended with the Gophers well in front, 78 to 46. He's going to take it in all by himself. <laughs> the first round laugher was followed two days later by a more formidable challenge, a matchup with Temple's matchup zone. Sam Jacobson open for a three and he sinks it again. Unlike Southwest Texas State, these owls were no pussycats. Temple smothered Ole Miss to reach round two. But this time the Gophers shot holes in a defense designed to keep the score below 60. Bobby takes another three and sinks that one, too. With Jacobson, Jackson, and Charles Thomas on the trigger, the Gophers poured in seven first-half threes. It's a three, and time runs out. The long-range missiles had a devastating effect. As Temple spread its defense to guard the perimeter, their fabled matchup zone imploded. Then head to Harris, two on two. To Lewis, back over to Harris, goes in and scores. Nice fast break basket. By the second half, passing lanes clogged with traffic were now as free as the interstate. And those I-35 commuters who turned Kemper Arena into a Twin Cities suburb were in seventh heaven on cloud nine and headed for the Sweet 16. A steal by Jackson, over to Jacobson, back to Jackson, in and it rolls in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Jackson, there we go. From Kansas City, the Gophers moved further south to San Antonio, where a Texas two-step would bring a trip to the Final Four. Naturally, they saw the Alamo, a sight they are sure to remember. But their favorite landmark was the Alamo Dome, a place they'll never forget. Play hard is a motto the Gophers wear literally on their backsides, figuratively on their sleeves. On March 20th, that slogan came to life in a double overtime scrum with Clemson. Their win over the Tigers at the San Juan shootout was now meaningless. A victory in December and $600 can get you to the Final Four. The Gophers wanted a ticket that money just can't buy. Throughout the season, Minnesota had attacked like an octopus. Tentacles that stretched deep into the bench often led to victory. For much of this night, their offense was a two-headed monster. To the left side, back out Sam for a three. Slash! Woo! Between them, Sam Jacobson and Bobby Jackson scored 26 of the Gophers' first 31 points. When the rebound goes ahead to Jackson from Charles Thomas, and Bobby makes it anyhow, and he was fouled by Buckner. Gophers have it, Charles Thomas ahead to Jackson. Wheeling in, Sam Jacobson with a 360 ball, the basket, and a Jacobson. Deadly efficient, often spectacular. Jackson and Jacobson turned an early deficit into a 13-point lead. Puts up another outside shot, and that is good. Clemson bounced off the ropes late in the first half. With the help of a buzzer beater that, in fact, did not beat the buzzer, the Tigers pulled to within six. Thereafter, the battle was odd. In the second half, the Gophers lost their lead, then took it back again on a pull-up by Jacobson. Minutes later, they lost their point guard. Harris is down and not getting up. And he is going off. Eric Harris favoring that shoulder. Must have been where he landed on the floor. The injury that sent Eric Harris to the bench would certainly have sent lesser teams home. But in this ongoing test of courage, the Gophers were heavy metal. As each possession became more critical, Jacobson caught fire. Sam takes the outside shot and scores. 
Sam broke a 56 all tie and scored nine of the Gophers' next 14 points. Jacobson was superb. Bobby Jackson was breathtaking. Saddled with four fouls, Bobby took the point, and his ensuing 17 minutes should be framed forever. Down six in the first overtime, it was Jackson to the rescue. The ball is stripped away from him. James has it. Over to the Gophers. Into the front court. Bobby Jackson goes all the way and scores. Tying it up. In the second overtime, Quincy Lewis gave the Gophers a two-point lead. And there is Quincy Lewis, and he makes the basket, and he's fouled. Their All-American made sure they never gave it back. Jackson scored from behind the arc. Bobby hits a three. Then he scored again, this time with the shot clock headed for zero. Shot clock shows seven. Pull up, jump shot. Bobby from the free throw line, a basket by Jackson. In 17 remarkable minutes, Bobby scored 18 of his game-high 36 points. Together, he and Sam Jacobson had 65 as Clemson went down in a classic 90 to 84. It's about defense and those opportunities on defensive end created shots for me and Bobby. And I think um, anytime you got players that are, are hitting a few shots and getting a hot hand, continue to give them the ball. And, you know, tomorrow night, next game, it might be, you know, Charles Thomas, Quincy Lewis hitting for 20. So that's, that's what our team's all about. That's the most exciting game I ever played in my life, especially when it's the, you know, in the NCAA tournament, you know, everything's online and you want to get to the Final Four. You gonna sleep all the night? I'm gonna sleep like a baby. I ain't, you know, <laughs> I'm so tired and drained, I'm just gonna sleep hard as a rock. I'm not even gonna move. The road to Indianapolis had a Hollywood finish two days later against UCLA. With a better start, the Bruins would have been a one seed. Four of their starters are destined for the NBA. The Gophers, meanwhile, were spent. Eric Harris was determined to play, but hurting. His teammates had given their all in that exhausting game with Clemson. Welcome to the Midwest Final, where guts and perseverance were dressed in gold. West shoot score! If the win on Thursday was a tale of two starters, the matchup against UCLA was a call to arm and to the fresher legs of the Minnesota Reserve. In the first half, Quincy Lewis and Charles Thomas kept the Gophers afloat when their shaky start was in need of an offensive transfusion. Soon after, Bobby Jackson settled in, scoring six points in a hurry to put the Gophers up by two. Over to Bobby Jackson, two on one with Charles. Bobby away on a solo push to coach. The Bruins ended the first half on a mini run and began the second with their eyes on the final four. It was a sight they would only see on television. And in is John Thomas for a slam. Down by 10, the Gophers pounced clawing back with a two-fisted assault led by John Thomas and Quincy Lewis. Over the shoulder and in, Lewis with his second in the last half minute. Lewis scored 10 points in a matter of minutes, then passed the baton to Charles Thomas. Hustles into the front court, goes all the way in, and puts it in on the left side layup. Charles Thomas. As the legends of Westwood staggered in a standing eight count, Jacobson and Jackson moved in for the knockout. Into the front court. Across the key to Sam, puts it up, and in! Bobby starts to move, gets into the lane, and gets his first basket of the second half. Beautiful. Suddenly, the game had turned. Long pass up court, Charles Thomas is there. He goes in and scores! The Gophers pulled away to the most significant victory in the history of Minnesota basketball. And they did it their way, as they had all season, with many hands and strong hearts and with a determination that simply would not let them lose. He goes all the way in and slams it in! The road to Indianapolis is now ready. It is paved with gold. We're not going to finals with individuals, we're going as a team. Being down 10 points in that second half, guys, surely what you made out of it. You didn't panic, 
that shows the class and the character of individuals. You as individuals. And that's what Minnesota basketball is all about. That would be a trivia question. We're the first team in the history of Minnesota to go to the Final Four. When you're 70, 80 years of age, okay? If you ever come on, you call right away. I know that answer. Okay, so I'm part of it. As the Nets came down in San Antonio, the excitement boiling some 1,300 miles to the north was ready to explode. A crowd beyond capacity filled every square inch of Williams Arena to celebrate to congratulate the coach of the year, the Big Ten's player of the year, and most of all, a group of individuals who became one. In a season that ended just 80 minutes from the national championship, this will be a lasting image. The players and their fans together as the Raptors shook with joy in a cathedral of college basketball. This was their finest season ever, a season that was golden. Wow!